what is up everyone it's emily and welcome back to my channel for this preptober video i'm gonna do something a little bit different this is going to be less about well, these next two Preptober videos are going to be less about the structure and writing of your story itself and more about you as a writer and how to overcome maybe issues that you're dealing with in your writing. For this video, I want to focus on writer's block. Yes, we have all heard of it. We've probably all experienced it at some point. If for some reason you don't know what writer's block is, that is when you are writing something and it just feels like a mental block in your head. You don't know what to write. You don't know how to move forward. It feels like there's a wall between you and your work and you just feel stuck. In my mind, I think about that Spongebob episode where he needs to write the six word essay for Mrs. Puff and he ends up procrastinating the whole night and like the sheet of paper with the the on it or whatever. Like <laughs> I think about that all the time when I think about writer's block. So we're all familiar with this concept of writer's block and how frustrating it can be. But what I've realized and what I've learned is that it is actually a symptom of a bigger problem. Writer's block is not something that is innately wrong with you as a person or you as a writer. It is not your brain not able to write or something like that. It has nothing to do with your skill. Everyone experiences this. But it is a symptom of a problem, probably with your writing itself. And during NaNoWriMo, when we're writing on a timeline and we want to get as many words as we can and finish our story in a month, having writer's block can really get in the way of finishing your story and it can be extra frustrating when it comes down to it because like you you want to finish your story and if you have something that is quite literally blocking you from writing like that is I can't even imagine something more frustrating than that there is a tiktoker named Mary Robinette Cowell and I'm going to link her tiktok somewhere in the description down below but she is a sci-fi writer she has won all these awards she is so smart and is honestly one of the best sources for writing help I have ever found and she's so real and just really breaks stuff down. On top of it she is neurodivergent and has diagnosed depression and she talks about that openly in her work as well and about how that affects her writing process and as someone who's also neurodivergent and diagnosed with depression and anxiety like these are all things that I found really, really helpful. She is absolutely brilliant and amazing. And I highly suggest that you check out her work and listen to everything that she has to say because she is absolutely brilliant. And she's actually the person that a lot of this video is going to be based off of. So I wanna be clear, a lot of the terminology and things that I'll be talking about in this video come directly from her. I'm going to link the specific TikTok down below if you wanna watch her speak about it. But I really thought that like the way that she broke down this information was so insightful and so clear and well done. I haven't seen anyone break it down this simply and easily. When she spoke about how she deals with writer's block, like my mind imploded on itself. So I just wanna be clear, all credit to this terminology and everything I, I talk about in this video pretty much is going to her directly. And I highly suggest you check out her work because she's absolutely amazing. So what she does is she broke down four different kinds of writer's block, four different things that equal the same thing. And each of them have a different source of the block in your in your brain and that the writer's block is a symptom of something not quite adding up in your story. So again, writer's block has nothing to do with your ability to write a great story. It has everything to do with maybe a problem within the story itself. So when she talks about the concept of having this reader brain and you know, as someone who's a writer, I know I am a huge reader as well. That's what this whole channel was based off of to begin with. And I know most other writers are also readers as well. And as someone who's been reading for her whole life and writing for a very smaller portion of that life, my reader brain has been curated through almost all of my life. I can tell when I'm reading a story, whether it has a good plot line, whether the characters are, are making sense. I can find plot holes in stories or, or where things don't add up a lot quicker when I'm reading it than when I'm writing it. And so when you're dealing with writer's block, 99% of the time, it's your reader brain telling your writer brain, hey, something isn't adding up here and your writer brain just maybe can't figure out what that thing is. And so you, you deal with this mental block. So she has four different reasons for writer's block and ways that it manifests itself. And those different reactions are gonna help us diagnose what's wrong with the story. So she breaks it down to staring, drowsy, dithering, and restless. 
those are our four little subsections here. So the first one is staring and she kind of is like, how long can I stare at this screen without doing anything? And I have definitely found myself doing this where I'm just like standing there and like my cursor on the, on the keyboard is just blinking back at me. And I'm like, I have no idea what I'm supposed to write next. <laughs> the problem, if you find yourself staring at your keyboard, is that you quite literally don't know what's going to come next. And in order to solve that, her solution is to write down 20 things that could happen next. And then to just go with one of them. And I think once you write down 20 things, you probably by that point will know what is actually going to come next. Because at that point, like you've come up with all of these different things, one of them is gonna stick out as feeling correct to you. And if it doesn't fit with your story and you start writing it, you're gonna know pretty much right away that it doesn't fit and then you can just easily go back and rewrite that section. For me, I think you can also, if you're an outliner, you can go back to your outline and see what point is coming next that you need to get to and come up with a way to just quickly get from the point that you're at to the next point. Another thing that I could suggest is introducing a character to the scene because introducing a new character automatically makes the scene more interesting and they can be the catalyst for pushing the scene forward. The other thing that you could try is just whatever is happening in the scene, make it go horribly wrong. So if you don't know what to do next, just whatever is happening, make it just completely fall apart and have your characters try and solve their way out of it. Because like I said in my past videos, we as readers love to see characters overcome struggles. And so make your characters struggle and see how they get out of it. The next one she talks about is drowsiness. And that's like when you're sitting at your computer and you're almost falling asleep. You get sleepy when you're working on your book. And like, I, I don't want to say bored, but yeah, you're probably bored. And she says that you're probably boring yourself with your story. And... The solution to that is to just go back in your story to the part that made you the most excited and rewrite from there, but choose a different path for your characters to take. Choose a more interesting path, put more roadblocks in the way, and just try and work your way through the story a different way and in a more intriguing and exciting way for you as the writer. The next is dithering. And she says, this is when you keep rewriting the same sentence or paragraph over and over and over again. You get stuck and you just, you wanna get this one paragraph right, but it's just not fitting in your story. And she said that the problem is that it probably doesn't fit in your story. And you're trying to make a puzzle piece fit that just doesn't belong there. And you in your reader brain know that, but your writer brain is thinking, but I want to put this here, but your reader brain is like, ding, 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 something is not adding up. And she said the best thing to do is to just cut it completely and move on. If you're like me, I keep anything that I cut from my story in a separate document so that I can refer back to it later if I choose to incorporate it in another draft or just later in the story itself. So you could always do that, but if your brain is telling you this probably doesn't belong here, then you're probably right. Like your instinct in the story is probably right and just trying to rewrite that sentence or paragraph is just going to keep you in this rut and then you're not gonna be able to move forward. And then I would just say to put something completely different in and see where that takes you. The next one is restlessness. And this is when <laughs> you sit down to write and then 10 minutes later you find yourself in the kitchen doing the dishes and you're like, how did I get here? <laughs> because you're basically just procrastinating writing the scene that you're working on. I know for me, I find myself just like, doing anything else so like sweeping the floor or looking in the refrigerator for something to eat or something like that like i can just never get myself to sit down and write she says that the problem for this is probably that the next scene you're trying to write is hard either emotionally or technically or there's you're just having some sort of difficulty with the scene and that's, I mean, that's a big reason why people procrastinate is that you want to make it as good as you can. And maybe part of you is thinking that you won't be able to live up to that expectation that you've put on yourself. Her solution to this is to just power through it. You just have to write the scene in, you know, it doesn't need to be perfect, but there isn't really another way around it. If it's an emotionally difficult scene, you just, you just need to write it. And you know, a first draft is just a draft. That's all it is. It doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be published, like ready to be published the next day. You just need to get something down on the paper. I would suggest also is that if it's something that is really holding you back and you're like, I just cannot do this today, but maybe I can tomorrow, I would just skip that scene and keep writing. 
I would just move on and when I'm in a better place to come back to it, I would go back and write that scene later. Sometimes it is just like, I can't do it today. I'm too tired and this scene is gonna take a lot out of me. You know, why waste your energy fretting over that when you could just write the next scene and keep going and come back to it when you're in a better place. And then she had this secret fifth one <laughs> and it's when the joy in writing has completely dissipated and you are starting to feel depressed. When this happens, there's something going on and it's not the writing and it's not you as a writer or a person and it has nothing to do with your worth as a creative individual. But the one thing that you can do is to just take time for yourself and take care of yourself. Take the time to figure out what it is that's truly causing this, this feeling within you because it's not you and it's not the writing. And taking care of yourself is more important than any story. And it's more important than NaNoWriMo and it's more important than, you know, anything else. Like you are more important than getting your story done in a month, you know? So I always thought, I thought that I needed to include that one because I think we all need a reminder that depression is real. And as creative people, I think we have a tendency to feel the world a little bit harder than other people do. Depression comes quickly and it comes easily sometimes. And it's not easy to deal with, but it is important to know that you are more important than the work that you put out. So take care of yourselves. <laughs> and if that is what is stopping you from writing, then it's probably just the best thing is to just not write at that time. That is everything that Mary Robin Cowell talked about in her TikTok. I also curated a short list to talk about some other things that you can do to overcome your writer's block. And I'm just gonna share them with you now. So these are all just things that I've either learned over time or found online. As always, I'll have a couple articles in the description that if you wanna read up on your own. But yeah, here's just a couple more, uh, more tips from me. So I kind of talked about this a little bit ago, but just your first draft is just a draft. It's a rough draft. Just let it be rough. Let it be bad. Let yourself, give yourself permission to write poorly because the most important thing with the first draft is that you finish it. That's the most important thing. You can edit it as much as you want after you've written the first draft, but until you've written the first draft, you can't do anything else. So it's just, you just need to let yourself write bad, break all of the rules, don't care about grammar so much if you don't want to, you know, if that's what's holding you back from finishing, you know, don't edit as you go because the second you start judging your work as you're writing it, you're going to, first of all, I feel like I burned myself out. But then also you're gonna be overthinking everything you write when really what you should be focusing on is just writing. A lot of the times in my first draft, if I know what is to come, but I just don't wanna write this particular section because my mind's not in it or whatever, I'll just put like in parentheses, highlighted, bold, all capital letters, like insert battle scene here or insert conversation where character A learns blank or whatever. Because what I don't wanna do when I'm, thinking I'm gonna experience writer's block is stop my writing flow. Because the second I stop the writing flow, it's over. For me, it's about just to keep going and going and going when I'm in that, that zone for it. Because if I stop to research something or look something up or a million other things, I will get myself out of the groove that I've worked up and then it's gonna be an uphill climb to get myself back to the point where I was. So if I like come across something and I'm like, crap, I need to research this, I'll make a note of it, put it somewhere, and then I'll just come back to it later because that is infinitely better to me than getting myself caught up in research for 30, 40 minutes or something along the way. Another thing I can suggest is if you are having trouble with your plot moving forward is to just talk about your book aloud. You know, talk about the premise of your book, talk about the plot and like where they're going. And if you can do this with someone else, I feel like for me, that's even better. I talk to Hugo about my books all the time. And sometimes I just need to like, say stuff out loud and then I will realize things while I'm talking through it because my brain will fill in the blanks while I'm going and then I'm like, oh, that makes so much more sense. And also just like, if I'm coming back to a chapter that I started the day before, I will just reread what I had already written for that chapter so far because it will help me get back into the same headspace that I was in when I was writing originally and it'll help me continue forward. The next thing I would say is to just, if you have an outline, is to go back to your outline because if you've outlined it, fairly specifically or whatever, like you're gonna know, okay, so my characters are here, I need to get them here. What's something I can put in between to 
ease that transition out. Or if you know what point you're going to, if you need to skip that section, then you can just be like, okay, I'm just gonna go here now to this chapter and I'll just come back to that part later. I think sometimes the easiest thing is to just go with the first thing your mind comes across and if it's not great, you can fix it later. But like, I remember in my first book, I had this like random scene where I needed some sort of like prophesizing something and I wanted it to be something kind of kooky and my brain was like a beaver. And so in the first draft of my book, it's still in there right now because I haven't come up with something better yet. There is a talking beaver and it like bestows wisdom upon the people that it speaks to. Super weird, super random. And I don't think it's gonna stay in the final draft, but when I was writing, that was the only thing I could come up with. And it's, it's kind of funny. And it got me from point A to point B. And like now that I'm taking a break from that book and I can go back to it with fresh eyes, I can go back and change things and make it make more sense later. Like just keep going, pick something and just go with it. And like, maybe you will end up really liking it and it'll be something totally unique to your story. Do writing sprints. I know I'm gonna be hosting some on my channel, but I find also that like, depending on the day that I'm having with my brain, like sometimes just writing in 20 to 30 minute increments is so much better than just trying to sit down and slug through it for a couple hours and sitting at my computer for three hours and writing two sentences. Because if I know that it's only 20 or 30 minutes and then I get a break, I am more apt to write during that time and I will just write anything during that time. And then during the five to 10 minute breaks, I'll get some water, I'll have a snack, I'll just take like a walk around the apartment or whatever, I'll, I'll pet Suki, you know, anything like that. It really helps when I'm in one of those days where I really just need to have that extra time in between to keep myself motivated. Also, just if your head is just not in the place to write that day, just go do something else. You know, I'm a knitter, I crochet, I, uh, I love to read, I like to work on puzzles and stuff like that. Like I would just suggest if your brain is not in it and, and you can't get yourself to write for one reason or another, just go do anything else. Go cook something, cook, cook something delicious for yourself, take your time, eat that meal, and then maybe by the end of that, you'll be feeling a lot better. I know like I do not write well when I'm hungry. And so that, I think that's why I keep going back to food is that like I have to have snacks nearby or I have to be able to have food readily available because when my stomach is hurting because I'm hungry, my brain shuts down. So I feel like sometimes we just need to take that time. You don't need to rush through it all. And just like maybe like reflect during that time, like what isn't working about your story? Is it, you know, like what Mary Robinette Cowell was saying that you don't know what's coming next. And then maybe take that time to just like reflect on like, what do you need to happen during that time? And if you wanna do something more related to your book other than just like knitting or watching a TV or something like that, like maybe you could look up some inspiring music that is like very themed towards your book or go on Pinterest and look at like your mood boards. Maybe do like character art or um, just meditate or go for a walk or and just think like while you're on the walk or just, I don't know. I find that taking yourself away from the work is more important at that time because sometimes you honestly just need a break and then the it, it will come back it will all be okay like you're not a bad writer because you have writer's block i promise so that is all i have for you today i hope you found this video helpful in maybe overcoming writer's block or maybe now you have some tips to help you during NaNoWriMo if you are feeling stuck in your writing if you did find this video helpful if you would please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel it helps me out so much i appreciate you all i hope you have a great rest of your day and i cannot wait to see you in the next one